All right, so welcome to another chemistry lab video. This one for kinetics. We're looking at a, one version of the iodine clock reaction. In this reaction, iodate ions, IO3 minus, are reacting with the hydrogen sulfite or bisulfite ion, HSO3 minus. And you can see the chemical reaction there. Um, in the reaction, it's a multi-step process. The bisulfite will get consumed. It's gonna get used up completely. Um, we'll know the initial concentrations because the bisulfite gets used up completely, its final concentration will be zero. So we can calculate the average rate of the reaction as the change in the bisulfite divided by change in time. We'll multiply by one eighth because that's the coefficient of the bisulfite in the chemical reaction. And I've got a table here that shows you what is in each of our beakers. We're going to look at the effect of changing the concentration of the bisulfite on the rate of the reaction. So in the first, we have five flasks, one to five this way. Um, in those flasks, there's a constant amount, 50 milliliters of 0 0.020 molar potassium iodate. And then we have beakers with varying amounts of the sodium bisulfite. It starts off as a 0 0.0080 molar solution. And we have 50 milliliters here of that solution, 40 mils mixed with 10 mils of water. And then we have 30 mils mixed with 20 mils of water. So the total of 50 milliliters in each beaker, but with decreasing amounts of the sodium bisulfate. They've been topped up with water to give 50 milliliters in each beaker. So I've got two volunteers to help me. They're gonna grab their beakers, both beakers, and we're gonna be pouring them into the flasks at the same time. We're gonna pour them quickly into the flask when I count down. And um, as soon as we pour them in, at home, if you're watching the video, you can start timing the reactions. So I'll give a little three second countdown. And when I say go, we're gonna pour in the chemicals. So three, two, one, zero, go. All right. So now as they react, you at home when you see something, whoop, something interesting happen, you need to stop timing for that flask. So remember the sodium bisulfite is getting less concentrated as we go across. So the formation of a iodine starch complex is taking longer and longer with each trial. If you know the time needed to create this complex, that will be your final time. During that time, the bisulfite was being consumed. So this blue color appears when the bisulfite has been completely used up. So if you can do dilution calculations using the information that was in the table, you can calculate the initial concentration of bisulfite in each flask when we combined the chemicals together. And then if you know the time required to make this blue-black complex, you can then calculate the average rate of the reaction. If you've got your average rates and you know the concentrations of bisulfite in each of the five flasks, you can create a graph and examine the effect of changing the concentration on the rate of the reaction. That last flask is the least concentrated bisulfite, so not surprisingly, it takes the longest. But as one of my students told me today, you simply have to have faith in chemistry and the reaction will occur, <laughs> okay? So let's count down. There we go. It's a just changed color. It's a much less intense blue-black, partly because it's, it's less concentrated. So there you have it. Trial one of the iodine clock reaction. We've just diluted the bisulfite. We're going to reset and we'll do the same thing, but this time changing the potassium iodate's concentration. All right, so we've reset for part two of this kinetics experiment. This time we have five flasks, each of which has 50 milliliters of the 0 0.008 molar sodium bisulfite. In our beakers, we have decreasing amounts of the potassium iodate solution, 
but each one has been topped up to a total volume of 50 milliliters, just like in part one. So using dilution calculations, you can calculate the concentration of, of the potassium iodate in each of those beakers. Now don't forget, when we combine that with the flask contents, it's gonna be diluted again. So let's now add the potassium iodate, the same way we did before. So I'll give a countdown, three, two, one, go, and we'll add the chemicals. So here we go, three, two, one, go. We have little magnetic stirrers, which are keeping the contents mixed. <laughs> Those two changed color very close together. Just like before, the average rate of the reaction is the initial bisulfite concentration in each flask divided by the time required for the um, color to change and also divided by one, divided by eight. We multiply by one eighth each time because the coefficient for bisulfate, bisulfite was an eight in the chemical reaction. So the iodate concentration is getting less and less each time. The color takes longer to change. It's possible in this trial that the last flask has such a low iodate concentration that it actually won't change color. We'll give it another, oh, 30 seconds or so. If that's the case, oh, there we go. All right, sometimes that last trial is so dilute that it actually doesn't change color. So now you have the enough information to calculate the average rate of reaction in each flask and the concentration of the iodate in each flask. And you can again graphically see the relationship between those two things, looking at the effect of changing concentration on the rate of the reaction.